Yeah, so we have a simple way of describing it as the science and engineering. So there's several things inside of that that people might be hearing for the first time, the idea of patient work. So that's the effortful, consequential, goal-directed activity that all of us take part in. We, you know, uh, whether we're going grocery shopping to you know, enhance our nutrition or whether we are taking our medication that's been prescribed by a physician, um, that is patient work. Um, and the study of that patient work, you know, the scientific investigation of how do people do it, where do failures occur, how can we help them? That's the science of uh, ergonomics. Um, and the engineering part of ergonomics is trying to find ways to improve the way that people perform either their day-to-day -day activity or their self-care of their health conditions um, or their management of, uh, of acute disease conditions, including um, over the last year and a half, um, a viral infection. So the reason it's important is that, um, you know, there, there are deficiencies in patient work that lead to really consequential uh, poor outcomes for people, for their families and for society. Um, and we as engineers, the people trying to improve that work, think that the more we understand what people do, uh, the better we can help them. Yeah, so um, the credit really goes to a number of people. Um, it's not just myself. I had a co-editor, Rupa Valdez at the University of Virginia. Um, and then we had a lot of contributors. Um, we had contributors from I want to say um, uh, four different countries, maybe five different countries um, all over uh, the United States. And these are amazing scientists and uh, scholars and uh, physicians and nurses who are um, studying patient work. Um, we put this together over the last uh, year and a half, two years. Um, and I believe there are a total of 26, 27 chapters. So each one of them uh, deals with a particular segment of patient ergonomics. Um, in the first volume, it's all about the foundation. So it's um, the physical aspects of patient ergonomics, the cognitive aspects of patient ergonomics, the organizational aspects, and then a lot about methods uh, as well as specific topics such as self-care, so managing chronic illness, for example, um, patient professional communication, so going and you know having that conversation with your physician or your uh, healthcare professional, um, health information technology, and um, uh, patients' roles and family roles in patient safety, so ensuring um, uh, uh, safe care. Uh, and then the second volume is all about applications. So that's where we look across settings and populations. We look at populations that are underserved. We look at uh, pediatric, we look at uh, older adults, and then we look at uh, a number of settings, including retail pharmacies, uh, the emergency department, um, uh, and, and uh, transitions between locations as well. So the, the whole uh, two volume set is a, is a handbook in the sense that it covers the gamut of all topics um, uh, that are kind of salient within the area of patient ergonomics. That's yeah, a great question. I mean, first of all, it's a, it's a bit of um, an awareness and a realization that, as I said, patients do work. Uh, which we sometimes take for granted. You know, we think that um, I, I've had a, a, a student who was a nurse for a long time in her career. Um, she, I think, worked as a nurse for 30 years on the floor. And, um, and then she started studying with me and she became actually one of the uh, big leaders in, in patient ergonomics for medication management. And she said to me one day, uh, you know, for 30 years, I used to think that it was all about um, the doctor tells the patient to take medication and they just do it. They just comply or they don't comply. And she said to me, I'll never call it compliance ever again because it's way more than just taking a pill that you were to told to take. Um, it involves a lot of you know, managing of supply, making decisions. Should I take it now? What if I missed it? What do I do? Uh, it's a lot of cognitive work, a lot of physical work and a lot of things that really rely on um, outside influences financial influences, the support of family, access to transportation, um, what we sometimes call social determinants of health. 
And so I think number one is just like that student um, had a realization. I think that readers who haven't really thought about all the factors, all the you know uh, work system factors that go into human health, um, it'll be a bit of a realization. It'll be an opportunity to think about you know what can I do besides. Um, you know, managing the medical care of this individual. What can I do in terms of facilitating the work they do? Um, some of my colleagues actually, um, and, and this is a, a good group of researchers at Mayo Clinic and, and in Minnesota, um, they've started uh, looking at patient work and patient workload. So the amount of uh, demand put on a patient to manage disease, uh, both by the disease itself as well as by the treatment. And they've started um, training their physicians um, and, and uh, you know, preparing their physicians to do what they call minimal disruptive medicine. And that is uh, you know, reducing the amount of um, recommendations made to do difficult things. Or if you're going to recommend that somebody go and you know, do cardiac rehab, you know, exercise for 30 minutes a day, every single day of the week, um, then you have to provide some kind of support. So you might need to provide transportation. You might need to provide uh, free or reduced access to uh, exercise facilities. And so um, that's a really concrete example of where physicians are being trained um, to really not just be aware of the concept of patient work and the potential for patient ergonomics, but also how to implement it into their own practice. So we're hoping that some of the insights that we have from the science and the engineering um, will also be useful for physicians, but obviously also useful for people designing uh, health information technology and various other tools for physicians and other professionals. Yeah, that's a great question. I think we're kind of early in this, um, the development of this community of practice or discipline. And I think that as a result, we've really focused on certain groups and certain phenomena that are um, really essential and salient. Um, and some of those are older adults and aging, uh, chronic disease. So there, that is really well covered. We did a scoping review of what has patient ergonomics uh, actually looked at over the last 10 years and aging and chronic disease are definitely covered. Um, health information technology, I already mentioned. So uh, technology and various other tools that people use, especially that are used by patients, uh, for example, patient portals and apps, um, those have been studied very well as well. Um, so when we start going outside of that, I think that we, we need to expand the application areas. Um, and that's why we wrote the second volume to really start looking at new application areas. So one of the places with, where we think that there's a lot of potential um, is, is the community. So settings like community pharmacies, um, where people make a lot of very important decisions about um, prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, uh, groceries. So that's one area where, where we think that there's an opportunity to expand, as well as others in the community settings. But also we want to look more at uh, groups that have been underserved and who are um, ravaged by health disparities. Um, and so again, when you look at the, uh, the kind of people that have been studied, the kind of people that have been benefited by patient ergonomics, uh, very often it's, um, it's a wider, more educated individuals. And so we're, we're not just now, I mean, there are a lot of people doing this work, but we're moving the field to really think about what can we do for people who are underserved, um, people who are in rural, um, settings, people who are, um, you know, lower health literacy and so forth. Well, you can search the patient factor on amazon.com. That's probably the easiest. Um, you can also visit um, Taylor and Francis or Rutledge um, to go straight to the publisher. Um, or uh, for those who are uh, able to remember this long, uh, way of getting there. Um, you can visit our website, which speaks all about patient ergonomics. Um, it's the innovative you.com slash lab slash PT ergo for patient ergo. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, materials, not only for accessing the book, but also 
uh, reading several of our articles and finding the many, many um, town halls, discussion panels, and workshops that we've done on the topic. Yeah, I, I want to say that there are a lot of individuals who are already doing things that are very much in line with patient ergonomics. The, the term ergonomics um, is foreign to a lot of people. It's literally Greek uh, for uh, work science. So patient work science is uh, what patient ergonomics means, but a lot of people are doing it and they call it very different things. Um, what we'd like to do is create a community of practice that's broader than just the term patient ergonomics, broader than just the discipline that we've created um, and really allows uh, people from across disciplines to work together to improve the work that patients do.